Happy Monday, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life on this August 3rd. So glad to have you with us today. I'm Derek Shore. I got to tell you something. When you walk into this studio on a Monday and there's a red stripe and some Jamaican food sitting in front of you, we don't need to go anywhere else. Yeah, I had no idea we're having food on today's show. This looks great. What do we have here? Uh, this is part of our traveling through takeout, so we know we can't go anywhere. So we're traveling like we normally can. Uh, but just through the restaurant scene mm. here and uh, Cool Runnings Jamaican Grill. I've had them um, with their food truck. Absolutely amazing. And I uh, got a little red stripe action. You know what I say to that? What? Yaman. Yaman. Yeah. Mm. These uh, fried plantains are delicious. Some of my favorites. So good. Um, what we have on here is, I'm sure I'm not going to... Um, say this correctly, but it's Jamaica's national dish. Aki and salt, saltfish, and then oh. oxtails, rice and peas, and then of course red striped beer. Wow. Uh, Rachel McNeil, d one of my best friends in the whole entire Used world. Used to be a Channel 2 anchor here. She's Jamaican. And yeah. Monica, Mons, her, her mom, mom. Well, there, there we were at her wedding in Jamaica. Oh my gosh, that's you. That's me about 100 years ago. Look at his young Your hair Courtney. is so short, huh? I know, but how fun is this? So they were married in Montego Bay. This is Orlando and I pre-kids. Look wow. at that. We had so much fun. Very that wedding relaxed. was a blast. I had to go through some of these photos. That's basically what we did the entire time. Mm. That's what we did. Don't you wish you could do that now? I do. Yeah. I, you know what? We can. Let's just sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Let's it just was pretend. fun. Jamaica is such a great, great trip. Uh, you've never been, right? I've never been. You need to go because it's totally low key. You just hang out. You you just automatically just kind of decompress the second you get on the plane. You're not even there yet, you know? And you're already relaxed. Yeah. Yeah, Jamaicans, they definitely have a, a chill vibe. I remember watching the movie Cool Runnings as a kid. The boys just watched that the About the Olympic bobsled team. Yeah. yeah, I loved that film. And it was one of the only movies we had on DHS. We watched it mm. over and over and over, especially during the summer. But even if you uh, are not going anywhere this summer, most of us are not, we're staying right. at home, you can do a little takeout. Oh my gosh, this is so good. So we have the mm. whole series coming up. The story is coming up a little bit later. It's delicious. Ruth, I am eating. I'm just, I'm here to show you. It's happening. Sorry if I'm talking with my mouth full. Who's Ruth? Mm, she was concerned once that I talked about food and didn't eat it. But I ate it. I'm just, you know, well, making sure she knows. Well, now you're going to get hate mail for talking with your mouth full. I know. That's coming. I know. Either way. <laughs> either way. We're the victims. Well, we're going to learn more about this spot. Cool Runnings Jamaican Grill later on in the show with our producer Olivia and our photographer Paul. It's so great that they were able to get out and have a little adventure. Absolutely. That's something that we've been trying to do more. You know, they say if you become a tourist in your own city, sometimes you can rediscover things that you might otherwise overlook. Right. Right? And I'm always surprised when I meet native Houstonians who are like, oh my gosh, I, I went to this place because I saw it on your show. And I think, again, we sometimes take for granted the things that we have in our own backyards, right? A hundred percent. As a matter of fact, I will say this, Orlando went to Govinda's today for lunch, mm. sent me a text and said, you know, because he was craving the samosas that, that we had on set that day that we both ate. They were they were so we good. We both ate them, girlfriend. We um, they were so good. But our friends over at Govinda's, and so many people have now gone and checked out Govinda's over there in uh, Garden Oaks area. Because of Houston Life? Because of Houston Life. So everybody's <laughs> just kind of, we can't travel, but let's experience different tastes, different foods. And it's such a welcoming place, and it's a really great spot if you're looking maybe to bring your kids on sort of an exploration, exploring the city, because the temple there is so beautiful, too. Yeah. I remember, so it's been like three and a half years since I've been to Govinda's. I was new in Houston, though, and so I had a hard time understanding just sort of like the layout of the city, right? right. I knew that I was there in this cool spot, but the restaurant reminded me of something that you would find like in Manhattan or the Arts District of downtown LA or even Chicago, like a really big city, right. uh, cool artistic vibe. The interior of the restaurant is very contemporary. And then, of course, you have the temple just adjacent to it. So right. it's a nice combination of a few different worlds. So get on out. And if you do try any of these places that we feature here for traveling through takeout, let us know. Post your pictures on our web website. But today I'm so excited. Uh, and by the way, hi to everybody over at Govinda's, too. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Um, super excited about uh, Cool Runnings Jamaican Cafe because this place, I mean, I know you're loving it. And had a little sip yet. Wolf it down. So one thing that we did this weekend over in East Downtown, also known as Edo, you know, there are all kinds of murals. And there's this proposed freeway uh, renovation. Right. It's way more than a, a renovation. But essentially the plan is that 
I-45 is being re redone and obviously it's a bit controversial because sure. there are neighborhoods that are affected and, and everyone wants to ensure that the people living in these communities that will be most affected are actually coming to the table and that they have a voice in this this process. But as a result, the freeway that's behind GRB, the, the proposed plan, right. is that will, it will go down below grade. So at street level, people will be able to cross from downtown into east downtown without actually going under the freeway. Instead, they'll go over it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So right now, murals, we already have so many incredible murals in the city, but because so much of this through eminent domain, so many of these buildings are, are going to be demolished. Right. Edo has exploded with murals. So everything west of St. Emmanuel, right there at Leland and St. Emmanuel, right. you can find all oh, kinds of picture. beautiful murals like this one. I love it. Which is a great nod to Space City. There's Brandon there and, you know, there's a little heart-shaped uh, hand there. But it's it was so great just to get out and explore and walk through the neighborhood. And people did a great job of masking up. But I love going through the neighborhood and seeing so many people out exploring. And you meet people who right. are native Houstonians or who are, who are visiting folks. I think it's so great. And I love seeing all these murals. I know you and I chat about this and just finding them all over the place. But right there, so pretty. I haven't seen that one. That's and right, I was yeah. so focused on the heart, I didn't realize that it was an astronaut until you said it. Like, I just was looking at the heart side of it, so I didn't look at big picture. Yeah, well, yeah. and what's great about it, there are so many different artists who are, are represented down there. Uh, Donkey Boy is one of them. I mean, you it's mural after mural after mural. Right. Even if you get out and you park your car and just walk around one block, you can There's see so dozens many. and dozens of murals on the same structure right so i recommend it get out and explore your own city and do they change like do they get yeah. they get covered up and then another artist does mm -hmm. it right it's like it's up for a certain amount of time uh -huh. i know the the lost angels uh you and i've chatted about this these are great graffiti artists in our city too and they're they're all over the place their instagram is very cool and they show the process too just like we've seen donkey boy and yeah. some of these others Gonzo. yeah doing and the process is really remarkable the layer after layer to come up with the with those murals murals and then graffiti art is so cool. Well, and to actually get out of your car and see them up close and personal, I know Lauren Kelly did a story for us a couple weeks ago. It's totally different when you are driving by and you see these murals, right. which are, I mean, downtown, there are murals that are six stories high, right? But when you get out and you park your car or you, you use your bicycle or revolutionary idea, you use your own feet and just walk, walk someplace. <laughs> uh, it's so nice to actually stand in front of these murals and just sort of take them in because you, you see the details and you appreciate the work that it took to create them so much more than when you're just whizzing by. Right, I agree with you, for sure. Very fun. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, it was well, nice. We also just spent some time at home. Brandon organized the pantry, which is, It's always know, an undertaking. It's always an undertaking. He was very proud, and he wrote a little guide and gave me a description of where I could find all the different things <laughs> in the pantry. And then... Look, the only thing you need to know is where the champagne and where the Cheerios live. That's well, it. Well, we don't keep the champagne in the pantry. The champagne is... <laughs> always on ice and ready to go even though Brandon doesn't really drink bubbles since when he's more of a red wine drinker that's that's how I end up drinking an entire <laughs> bottle myself because he's okay. like no I don't want it but we did order in from Uchi last night and that was great we did a little curbside pickup and it comes with a bottle of wine oh, so it's I love awesome it. and that you can either do uh, a completely vegetarian option so right. no fish involved or you can do a sushi takeout but it's great it's a great way to experience Ushi. You know, we're sushi fans. I know, we are too. We had sushi over the weekend too, and some ramen. The boys wanted ramen too. Oh, so we, ramen. we visited a place uh, in, in our neighborhood. Fantastic. It was really great. Because, you know, Saturday was such a washout, you know, with the rain and everything. Um, but last night, we did something that I've talked about here, and we've, we've done stories here. Um, the Rooftop Cinema Club. At Sawyer, Sawyer Yards, Yards oh, in good. the Heights. We did that. I have to tell you guys, the, the, this was so amazing. It was Sandlot, so it was perfect for the boys, a kind of a family movie. But isn't that great? I mean, the skyline. The view of downtown is so great. It's so, so it's great. It's like a modern-day drive-in yes. movie. We, ha we brought pizza, and we had our snacks, and it was just so much fun. And um, it was a perfect evening, too. This was right oh, before the movie wow. started. Look at that sunset. Mm -hmm. Really amazing. And I'm just, I'm so glad we did it. Go on Rooftop Cinema Club, Sawyer Yards. You can see the upcoming shows. I know there's Grease, um, there, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. If you're looking for like a late showing scary movie, oh, no. there's also Crazy Rich Asians. There's all kinds mm. of really great shows coming. So it's fun. You get to bring, they have popcorn. They have the burger joint. Um, 
a food truck there, but you can bring in whatever you want. We picked up some pizza and ate it in the car. And, and how does that work? So cars come in and you you have to keep your distance, right? They have correct. it marked out, so cars no are chairs. Apart. You know, you can't like park your car and you know put up 17 chairs around you. So you're sitting in your vehicle. Um, we had blankets, we had pillows to just kind of you know not that it was cold, but you know you want to sit on something yeah. nice and be comfy. And um, and then our other friends were there with us too, so they we parked next to them and uh, Chris, Allie, and and the boys, their boys. Uh, Ryan and Owen. So it was just fun to kind of see them and, and actually watch a movie, feel like you're going to the movies. So it was really fun. We enjoyed it. That's also one of my favorite parts of the city because you have, well, the train line right there. Did right. any trains come by? Uh, at, right as the movie was ending, the train did. Yeah, yeah, see, I think it's so cool. I Whether it's an airplane going over or a train going yeah. through, that's part of living in a city, right? It reminds me that we're alive. Right. Right. So Orlando and I were chatting about the, the movie, and I didn't realize this, and maybe you told me about this last time we talked about it, but Sandlot was filmed in, in Utah. Utah. And so his cousin, uh, Chalo Gonzalo, uh, played baseball growing up on that field. I guess it's Rose Park? Oh, I don't know. You don't know that area? It was a little rough, so no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Rose I mean, Park. I know where Rose Park is. It's an area of Salt Lake. That's where that field is that oh, they, they filmed that, that movie on. So he was telling me, and I, I had no idea that was even a, a film a uh, film movie filmed in Utah. <laughs> <laughs> Get it out. Yeah. Well, the, I, growing up in Utah, I knew I had heard that, you know, that film was... <laughs> <laughs> I know. That movie was filmed there. Uh, but I, I never saw The Sandlot. You remember, I told you this. We didn't it's see any movies growing up. It's such a sweet movie. There it's are a lot so of movies sweet. filmed in Utah. It's funny. And Independence Day was yeah. shot there. Footloose. Not Footloose. all of it, right? Just Footloose, that scene. Lehigh High School. Yeah. My sister lived in Lehigh for a while. Oh, yeah, the claim to fame. We've had a lot of movies shot at Houston <laughs> as well. Anyway, you should see Sandlot because it's cute. It's a fun, real cute movie about friends and baseball and it's sweet. Well, I'm glad you had fun. It was great. It was perfect. Maybe the next time, instead of staying at home and organizing the pantry, you can head out we'll to actually movie. get out and do something. But seriously, check out the calendar because it's, there's some really fun movies to go to. Rooftop Greece. Cine Cinema Club. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll check it out. Some good stuff. We've yeah. been trying to just, you know, check things off the list around the house, whether it's the pantry organizing or whatever. We do need to get out more. I need some help in the pantry. The junk drawer is out of control. The closet under the stairs, I mean, I don't even open it anymore. Seriously. We need to do a segment about that on the show. It's so, so embarrassing. Have you heard of this thing like hashtag Mask Monday? Like? Like a mask. Like a like mask a that you wear on your face. Mask. Okay. Yeah, so I hadn't heard of this until today. Katie, who is our executive producer. Katie, what is Mask Monday? Just shout it out. It's just to promote wearing your mask. Just promoting just to wearing, promote okay. wearing your mask. Okay, are you going to come in? You have something? You have a beautiful pink bag. Thank you, dear. And Katie does a great job of wearing her mask. Thank you so much. Other than w w being in Studio B, we do wear our masks throughout the building, right? Yes. So we should remind our viewers uh, before you send us this, you know, hate mail. Uh, we we do <laughs> go throughout our day wearing masks. We do. We have to around the building. Exactly. Can we just open? We're so, good to open. Okay. So what are what are these, Katie? You have to look at <gasps> I have a feeling it's a mask. Oh my! Oh wow! Oh well, this is. Oh, it's us. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. This is lovely. Who are these by? The problem is we can't wear this in public. We, well, we can't can wear it in the building. We can't go This anywhere. is one of those don't you know who I am moments. <laughs> in case you didn't recognize my eyes, here's a full face. Oh wow. These are cute though. These are great. Are we selling these? Are we giving these away? No, it's Paul. Sh it was Paul Shelton's idea. Oh, Paul, our definitely. photographer, Paul. Yeah. Photographer Paul he ordered these them? for you. Yeah. We'll oh. post a link online for the website that we got them from. Oh, my goodness. So you, too, can have a mask of us or yourself. No, not of us. What about an Oscar mask? That would be fun. That would be really cute. Yeah. Some people do, they create those masks and it's just like a printed version of their mouth. Oh, I love the mouth ones. Oh, I think I think they're terrifying. Oh, I think they're cute. Really? I love it. Yeah, especially now because we're not wearing any lipstick. The ladies, you know, we're not wearing any of our our lippies. Um, so now it's sort of like, hmm. Don't you think it's kind of convenient to not have to wear lipstick anymore? I love it. I love it. But I feel like I'm getting mac knee, though. Mask knee. Is, is like that I'm, a thing? 
Yes, the act, Dr. Sherry Ingraham. Yes, it's a thing, especially if you have to wear them. And she's on today. We're going to talk about sunscreen. She's talked about it before because if you're wearing these masks for a very long time, all day, you know, if you're back at work and you need to wear it, yes, because then your face is rubbing and, you know, it's a thing. Mask knee. Mask knee. Interesting. Yes. Huh. But we want to see your mask Monday photos, yeah. right? And thank you for these. For this is awesome. For suggesting these. I hope next Monday it's a mask. I can't ever wear this anywhere. I know, but you like can. Brandon, I could wear them around the building. Yes. I could wear this around Channel yeah, 2. Don't be a fuddy-duddy. No, no we're not wearing it in public. That's weird. Wearing it in public is... Sorry. <laughs> it's like the Zoom, being on the Zoom call with Courtney. <laughs> No, that's not me typing. typing. That's not me typing. That is not me typing. The uh, thank you for the masks, Paul. They're great. Paul, Paul we love you. Paul thank was you. the one who created the custom socks. Remember, I have socks with your face on yes. them. Yes, was that last year for my birthday or Christmas? I think it I was a know. Christmas gift. Lovely. I wear them all the time. Mm. Yeah, yes. it's very nice. Well, thank you, Paul, and that. Thank you for this mask that I will never wear. Oh, I'm going to wear mine. Except around the building. We I'm do definitely appreciate wearing it. Mine. And as Courtney said, please let us know. Send us pictures of your masks. I want to get one of those cool masks with a zipper oh. that, so you can put a straw through it. It's so convenient. Stylish and functional, functional, right? Two birds, one stone. Okay, so Courtney just mentioned as well that Dr. Sherry Ingraham is on the show today. We got to ask her about the mask knee and keeping your face clear in the age of COVID. But also, we have to talk about this, the best sunscreens and SPF products for both kids and adults. Every time she comes on, too, she has the best tips. She's got her recommendations to protect your skin, UVA, UVB rays before heading out the door. It's something that I think we all take for granted and I know that there are common mistakes people make like forgetting the tops of their feet or right Ear forgetting lobes. their ears yes yeah absolutely. so she's gonna walk us through and she always says you got to use way more sunscreen than you even think right? I know that was an eye-opener for me too also budget friendly these are products that you can find not only at her office but also um, you know all of the um, drugstores too okay so we have an up close and personal experience with a crocodile y'all do you see that oh my gosh lauren T kelly is going to take us to one of houston's best kept secrets wait that's a live picture right now yes we're looking at a live picture this oh. is the crocodile encounter i have been here with my kids for a field trip this is going to be amazing don't go anywhere oh. Okay, this I'm He knows what he's already. doing. Okay, before we get to that excitement, how about a taste of the Caribbean? Photographer Paul there on the right, producer Livia. They're gonna take us inside the local spot serving up some fresh island flavors. That's next. Cheers. Welcome back to Houston Life, everyone. If you've been dreaming of an island getaway this summer, well, forget about it. Keep dreaming. It's not going to happen. <laughs> but you can get close. Cool Runnings Jamaican Bar and Grill is serving up fresh island flavors that'll almost make you feel just like you're in the Caribbean. Just close your eyes. That's all you need. Yeah. Houston Life team members Paul Shelton and Olivia Kalonic hit the road to soak up the island vibes tucked away in southwest Houston. Say, uh, producer. Hi. <laughs> hey, it's Olivia Kalonic, Houston Life Associate Producer. Hey, I'm Paul Shelton. I'm a photographer here at Houston Life. And we're here for another episode of Travel, Travel Through Takeout. That was so corny. We'll try again. No, we can keep it. Just keep it. I'm keeping all of us in. Okay. And today we are headed to Cool Runnings Jamaican Grill. We're very excited. We've been listening to Jamaican music all the way here. Okay, cool runnings. Let's go. What is the island vibe? <laughs> what, what is the island vibe is, is, is one of the traditions in Jamaica is no problem. We want to get a feel like they're an island there in, uh, there in Jamaica. A very relaxed atmosphere. Of course, we, 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 we turn the music up. We promote the Jamaican beer, so you can just relax, feel at home. I'm, I was born in Kingston, so we were actually born in Kingston, too. But I um, spent a lot of my time growing up in Australia, which is, which is one of the very popular tourist spots in Jamaica. Jamaican being a cultural place where, where, where you come there and um, from the music, you know, to the food, I think the music sells first, the food sells second. And then you add the music to that, Oh, it's a very cool atmosphere. 
A lot of entertainment in the past few years. Whether they perform in here at Cool Running or other places in town, we provide food for just about any and everybody coming to Houston. Houston boards and have a few. Yes. <laughs> of course, the being a man, you know, the, you know, so we had an event some time ago with Kimana Mali. If you're in Houston, Texas at any time at all, you have to, it's a must. The stop show and check in, cool running restaurant. How would you describe Jamaican cuisine? I think the first thing to describe Jamaican cuisine would be spicy. Spice doesn't mean it's all gotta be hot, hot, hot. It does very flavorful. I, I was more acquired to season because of the fresh ingredients we use and the spices we use. So this is seasoned quite differently than your normal soul food oxtail. Definitely, it, it's seasoned and it has to be marinated at least overnight, 24 hours before, and then it's braised, not boiled. This is Jamaican national dish, ashi and saltfish. And this traditionally is common for breakfast? We, we will eat this any time of the day, but if you go to the hotels and stuff, you're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna put out this for your breakfast. Curry goat is to Jamaica, like what turkey is to America. <laughs> Anything you're doing festive, we're gonna kill a goat. <laughs> a goat, a goat is the festive food. <laughs> You come behind the doors, we give you that relaxed island feel. And in and out from the shop, coming to your table, to the food we present to you. And there's just the old vibe. Now we, we, we really try to create an island vibe when you come in. You know, and that's what we've been doing for years also. Yes, so much good food. I got the majority of it. Suck it in. Suck it in. Suck it in. That, that was such a great experience eating at Cool Runnings. I've never had Jamaican food before, and it was delicious. What did you think? We had a fun time. I was dancing a lot. Olivia's happy dance. Very happy. Um, that happened. Yeah. Come by and check it out. They got really good food. Really good people. Island vibes. Yes. Island vibes. Yaman. Oh my goodness. So good. So delicious. And uh, thanks again for lunch, too, because we've been wolfing it down. I know. If you would like to experience some of those island vibes for yourself, you can visit our website, HoustonLife.tv. Yeah, definitely go give them some love for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, tune in Thursday for another Travel Through Takeout episode. We're going to get a preview of a Colombian culture and cuisine at Paul's favorite restaurant, Mi Pueblito. Mm. Oh, that sounds amazing. We'll be right back. So welcome back. Circle K is giving away free gas for an entire year to one lucky winner each month. It's all part of our secret word of the day contest with Circle K. And it is such a great giveaway. You can play by watching for that secret word of the day during our 6 a.m. news Monday through Friday. And once you know that word, head on over to clicktohouston.com slash Circle K and enter that word for your chance to win prizes. Well, every entrant gets a coupon for an iced coffee from Circle K. That's pretty cool. Plus, you will get an entry into that monthly free gas giveaway and especially right now given everything that's happening in the world yes. I know a lot of folks could use some extra help so it's good timing on that it really is good luck for sure yeah and in the meantime we've been enjoying our uh, our little <laughs> masks. custom masks here as well we also have some masks that we need to show later on this week because I feel like you know a few months ago you never would have said oh I gotta go to the grocery store I forgot my you know I need my mask and now we can't keep them washed fast enough I know. at home. But we're also getting, uh, you guys are sharing your masks, so hashtag Mask Monday um, is what we're seeing on social media and all kinds of fun stuff, so show us what you're wearing, the mask. Yeah, in creative ways. I found, I went uh, back to Mochila over the weekend and I got another mask, like a bandana, Love that it. I can tie around. And mm -hmm. that way you don't have to, you know, you can just pull it up and use it and then you can pull it back down once you get into the car. Exactly, some good stuff. Yeah. I like a good fashion statement, you know, matching. It's, it's always You're stylish. Fun. Okay, after the break, a guide to sun protection. A dermatologist shares her picks for best sunscreens for you and the kids. That's next. And as we go to break, here's a look at some of the pictures you've been sending in on social media for Mask Monday. Keep them coming.
Well, if you've been spending any time outdoors this summer in the heat, it always is important to protect your skin from the sun's harmful rays. Uh, of course, but what type of sunscreen should you use and how much? Dermatologist Dr. Sherry Ingraham is breaking down her picks for the best SPF products to protect yourself and your family. And she's joining us now via Zoom. Hi, Dr. Ingraham. Great to see you. Well, great to see you all. You know, I think when we talk about this subject, you're the ones that opened our eyes to the amount of sunscreen. So before we get into the types, let's talk about the amount because a little pump isn't going to do you. No, I always tell my kids, you've got to cover yourself and cover yourself thick. A shot glass full is theoretically what we say. And I mean, kids don't know what a shot glass looks like. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> but it's like the top of a sunscreen lid. It's a little shot glass full to cover your entire body. And you want a pretty decent layer. One of the biggest things we find is the reason people get burned is they don't apply enough and they mm. don't reapply often. And aside, though, from the creams, Dr. Ingraham, the spray sunscreens, a lot of people go to those because they are more convenient, right? right? They have some alcohol on them so they can burn and they spray on. Let's talk about your first pick. It happens to be a spray as well. Well, I think it's important to include a spray. And the reason I like this spray from Elta is it's a zinc-based spray. So it's just zinc and titanium. So it's a true sunblock. So if you're looking for a spray that has staying power, you can use this. Now, a couple of tips. If you're going to do your face, obviously, you don't want to do it inside. You don't want to spray your face. I have a lot of men who like these. So I tell them, spray your hands spread it on your face and spread it on your scalp. If you're going to the beach or to the pool with your kids, always start that first layer of the day with a cream or okay. a lotion. That has better coverage. Then throughout the day, the spray is your reapplication because it's oh. all easy. You know, the only sunscreen you're gonna use is the one you feel comfortable using. So you've gotta find something that matches your lifestyle. And real quickly, before we get into the brands, where can we buy that particular product? So Elta is a dermatological favorite. So you can buy it at dermatologist's office, at Advanced Dermatology at our office, we carry it. You can buy it online at a lot of the derm stores, skin stores, and from the Elta website. Okay, perfect. So what I love about you is you give us options, accessibility to these types of great products. And now we're gonna go over drugstore sunscreen. And you, you say that there's some great ones there too. There's some great ones. You know, one of our go-tos, and this is one that my husband swears by, is this Neutrogena Ultra Sheer. And he likes it because it doesn't run into your eyes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get real sticky. It's designed to be sheer and lightweight, so it doesn't feel heavy throughout the day. And actually, my kids like this too. Remember, when it comes to kids and adults, and we'll get into this in a moment, really, any sunscreen can be used on a child as long as it doesn't burn or irritate them. So it doesn't have to be a baby or child sunscreen. Find something that everyone likes that's broad spectrum UVA and UVB. I like this sunscreen. You can get it at any drugstore or grocery store, but it also is UVA and UVB blocking, but it is a chemical sunscreen. If you are sensitive to chemical sunscreens, you want a physical sunscreen. So I'm gonna give you some more options also. What about minimum SPF? Because Dr. Ingerham, I noticed the one you just had, SPF. 45 is there a certain number we should be looking for you want to look for 30 or higher all sunscreens for adults or children should be 30 or higher and theoretically reapplied every two hours if you're out swimming or rubbing yourself with a towel now the fda just came out with new recommendations which state it should not be above spf 60 on the label above 60 isn't going to hurt you but spf 60 is high enough let's put it that way Okay, all right, let's talk about this more specific sunscreen for kids. You have some specific products. Yeah, I love this La Roche-Posay Antelios. Antelios is a great product from France. La Roche-Posay is made by La Roche-Posay, which is a company owned by L'Oreal. So it's a European ingredient mixoral that they really started putting into their sunscreens that has great UVA blocking. Now, this is a great product. My kids love using L'Oreal La Roche-Posay products because they go on very lightweight. They don't get in their eyes. It's designed to be cosmetically elegant for kids, which means it's lightweight. It melts in. They can reapply it. And also something to think about is that kids should reapply these themselves. So find something, teach them to apply it so they will reapply it themselves. Well, and that reapplication, I feel like this is key because there have been so many times I've been to the beach and I've gotten burned, right. even though I've been really careful about applying. So if a sunscreen is labeled as waterproof, what does that really mean? Because it seems like after you've been in the water, or if you've been sweating, obviously I'm doing something wrong if I'm still getting burned. 
you're not doing anything wrong. You're just being a busy, happy guy at the beach. Like we should all be, but you've got to keep in mind, really now they've changed the language to be water resistant, which means it's water resistant to up to 80 minutes, which means if you've been out swimming, you've been in salt water particularly, which is abrasive, you wiped yourself with a towel, you need to reapply. If you're out in the pool, you don't have to be as hyper vigilant, but really at the beach when you're in the sand, you really need to reapply every two hours. No sunscreen labels can any longer say waterproof. They can mm. only say water resistant for up to 80 minutes. So the key is reapply, reapply. And that's where that spray comes in. Because when you're covered in sand, you may not want to no. reapply lotion. You may want to do that second coat with a spray. And also, when we reapply, is it also wait a few minutes before you jump back into the water? Great point. So 15 minutes is the rule of thumb. And so I tell my kids, you know, as they're running to jump in the pool, give it 15 minutes, teach them to apply it themselves. Really, if they're older than five, they can apply it themselves. You may want to watch them because I, I kind of catch them putting a little bit on yeah. and, and I've taught them to put a thicker layer on almost so you see a little bit of it. But if they will reapply themselves or you grab them out of the water and reapply it, but you make a great point, 15 minutes before you get into the water. So it has time to adhere to the skin. Remember, physical sunscreens, zinc and titanium, which were in that Elta spray I showed you, actually are sun blocks. So they block and reflect light. Sunscreens, which are chemical sunscreens, which were in that La Roche-Posay and Helios for kids and in Neutrogena, actually absorb the light and then help it dissipate in the skin and not cause damage. They work a little bit differently, but the key again is always to put them on 15 minutes before you go out into the sun so they have time to bind to the skin and be the most effective. And before we let you go, Dr. Ingerham, uh, for, for folks who are out there seeing on the store shelves these sunscreens labeled anti-aging, lip sunscreen, even powder sunscreens, walk us through some of those products and do okay. they work? They do work. Now, I tell people, you don't want to use them as monotherapy. So, for example, I love this Isden powder. I use this almost every day. And what it is, it's really a mineral powder that's designed to be a sunscreen powder. So what I'll do is I'll put my sunscreen on in the morning. I tend to use a tinted sunscreen because then you're addressing makeup. Right. You've got good blockage of any discoloration. And then on top of that, I will sprinkle my sunscreen powder. Men actually do like these. Derek, throughout the day, they'll carry them in their bag get their golfing and kind of put a good dusting on and my kids love these awesome. when they get out they have a few minutes they eat they put a good layer on but you don't want to do this alone i usually say put sunscreen on and this is something that helps dry up moisture and oil and you can reapply throughout the day as far as lips go there's so many products on the market it needs to be spf 30 or higher this one is actually spf 31 this is an elta product that i like put it on first thing in the morning and then throughout the day at the beach some of them will come with color this one is actually good for men and women because it's colorist and moisturizing. It's perfect. All these are really great. And I know we went through a list of all of these things. We're going to make it available. Thanks so much for being here, Dr. Ingerham. It's always great to see you. Thank you for having me, guys. And yeah. that complete list of products will be on our website. Okay. Shifting gears now, still ahead, how you can experience nature up close and personal with one of Houston's best kept secrets. Lauren Kelly is here. This is a live pick at the Crocodile and Hunt Encounter in Angleton. It's awesome, y'all. We'll be right back. Oh, wow. Look at that. such an amazing place. There's so much to see here and there's so many crocs. There's also part of a zoo. So there's tortoises, there's lots of things to see. But of course, the main attraction is the crocodiles. There's hundreds of them on campus. And I'm here today with the owner, that's Chris Dieter. He has opened the doors. They are closed on Monday. So this was a great time for us to kind of come out and get a sneak peek uh, privately. Probably. How these crocs are living on their day off. Chris, how's it going? Over it's there? good. It's good. Glad to have you all out here today. We saw so. you feeding some of the crocs earlier. Some of them jump and they get lots of air. Of course, I want you to tell everybody on a normal basis, this place is great for tours and for field trips and for birthdays. Yeah, we do a lot of different things. Obviously, you know, whenever it's a non-COVID year, we're almost always have, there's hundreds of school kids out here every day. And uh, right now we're doing guided tours, of course, which is the best way to see the facility. Um, right now we're standing in front of a group of Orinoco crocodiles, which are one of the most endangered crocodiles.
miles in the world, and they are literally sitting here ready to go. So we may be running here in a second. But. So let me explain to you guys. <laughs> we have been teasing these crocs, carrying around a bucket of food. You guys saw Chris feed a couple of the other ones. We've just made it over to this part of the lagoon. We're going to feed these, and he's given us a warning that they're going to jump pretty high. So we actually have a croc. Very, very, very trained in this. So he knows what he's doing. <laughs> I'm going to scoot over. How many can we can we look forward well, to? Well, if you want, she's coming up right now. I'm actually going to just move. <laughs> We're going to shut the gate. What is his name? This is actually Loco. Loco. Oh, that, that is the perfect <laughs> definition. Perfect yeah, definition. now she's right at the gate. Now, obviously, we would be in here on the ramp typically, but she's not going to let me in right now because she came over to actually get fed. But Diablo's down here waiting over here. We got Loco here, and we have Coco on this side. So we have there's five of them in here. Loco, Coco, and Diablo. And Diablo, okay. yeah. And so they're going to explore pretty good. I'll see if I can get her to turn around, but we're going to feed Diablo first. So first of all, I know a lot of people want to know, what, what are these crocs eating? What's their food? Today we're giving them chicken. We feed them beef, pork, chicken, rats, rabbits. We give them a, a then I eat a pelleted diet in the evening that kind of fills in the vitamin mix that they need. But I'm going to come through on this one here. We're going to have to do it. So you can see the crocs are up there. They're they the just chew that on they just swallow it whole. They're going to swallow it whole bones and all. There's another one actually coming up on the deck. We're going to have a full house here today. Now she's actually taking, we have, we had a lot of crocodiles, as you can see, coming up on the feeding platform. Typically on the feeding platform, we are standing on the feeding platform and the You're crocodiles are in the water. There? We stand on the platform and the crocodiles are all around us. But obviously today, because typically we do a tour at 10 and 12, 10 o'clock we missed because we're off today. So these crocs are ready to roll. So they're up here and they're, they're getting really, really close. So obviously we're not going to be able to go in there right now and uh, unless she would back up. Chris, so. I want to mention, if anybody is scared, they shouldn't be because this we're at a very safe distance back and you make sure that nobody's getting up close. Correct. Nobody's ever in danger. Right. While you guys are feeding them, everybody's standing back. But this is as close as I've ever been to that large of an animal. Uh, you can't <laughs> grasp how big. How, how many pounds do you think that... Local These ways. are females right here. She's probably in the seven or eight hundred pound range. Okay. Uh, Diablo, who's a larger animal down there in the water, and the next enclosure is Alvaro. He's probably up around a thousand pounds. But th these are really big animals, and they only act like this on a feeding tour. If you're out here walking around on your own, you don't get to see this type of reaction. The animals will stay down in the water. Crocodiles are smart. And so when they see the guys, they see the buckets, they know they're going to get fed, and you get this kind of reaction out of them like that. Gotcha. So for a normal person walking around out here, they'll never see this if you're just walking around. But on the guided tour, everybody sees this. And then, you know, the guide is the target. So you can see they've stopped. Right. You know, crocodiles are really, really smart. A lot of people don't realize they're more closely related to birds than they are to lizards. And so when you're looking at these crocodiles, their brain is very bird-like. And so what you would teach a parrot, you can teach a crocodile. And so they learn very quickly, and they're going to sit there, and they're going to stop. They're not going to be like some rampaging Godzilla coming at you or anything <laughs> like that. You know, so. Well, I also have to point out, these guys have been very quiet. They're not very vocal, even with the bucket of food around us. Normally, like, dogs will paw and, and bark and yelp for their food. These guys haven't made any noise at all. No, uh, Orinocos are a relatively quiet species. American alligators are really, really vocal, but the Orinocos are, are pretty quiet. Uh, a lot of crocodiles are not as quiet. American alligators are the big yakkers of the crocodile world. Okay. I mean, they're the, they make a lot of noise. They're going to get one gotcha. to Diablo. Well, Chris, we're going to let you continue feeding those guys, but viewers, don't go anywhere. We're going to come right back. We've got tons more from Crocodile Encounter here in Angleton after the break. More with Loco and Diablo. And who is the third? Coco. Coco. <laughs> Coco, when we come back. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of them up here right now. Well, Lauren, you look beautiful, but we can't hear what you're saying right now. So we're going to work on fixing your mic and come right back. But in the meantime, down there in Angleton, I can't believe I have never experienced this. This is so awesome. I actually have been there with both boys on a school field trip. And let me tell you when I tell you, I think it was in second grade or third grade or something. Usually field trips are a little crazy, right? You know, when you're outside and the kids are rambunctious and what you could hear 
nothing. Because they were mesmerized. They were mesmerized. There was not a peep from anybody. They were watching everyone. They were listening to the presentations, and you get to walk all around their park there. Um, so it's really fantastic, and they're such great hosts when, when they have uh, the tours there, and obviously they're giving Lauren that up-close and personal one today, so it's fantastic. Well, and as Lauren was saying before the commercial break, just being there with a front row seat, these gators are way bigger than they appear, right? I oh, mean, yeah. when you are face to face with with one of these critters, they're large and in charge. Oh, absolutely. It's just so mesmerizing to see it, it with your own eyes, you know? Yeah, well, there was something, there was a gator that got loose, I think, a week ago. We covered it right here on Channel 2. And do you see huge. all of these, like, fully grown adults holding this gator down so and crazy. taping the snout before releasing it back into the wild? But I think we're good. I think we have her now, and we should specify, this is, these are crocodiles, though, here at Angleton, correct, Lauren? Yes, ma'am. Courtney, you are correct. You must have learned when you came here last time. <laughs> these are Nile crocodiles. And some of them actually come up a little bit quicker when Chris brings the food. What I really like about Crocodile Encounter is that Chris was a teacher, a science teacher for many years. So he knows how to kind of sneak in those lessons to kids without them realizing that they're learning things. And they're walking from different, different parts of this lagoon and the different encounter. So they're getting different voices and they're getting different visuals and they're learning about these crocs as they go from one lagoon to the other so i'm going to walk a little bit closer to chris so he can tell us a little bit about what these crocs are going to be eating all right so what we're doing here this is actually one of our grow out pools so when we have a baby crocodile we start them inside of a building then we move them to a second building and then they come out here until they're ready to go to the main lagoon and so what we're going to feed them right here is actually a pelleted diet and we actually when you come here you can buy these to feed them and then we're going to toss them in the water basically we're going to play fetch with a crocodile uh, I've always, so, something i've always wanted to do play yeah, fetch with absolutely. a crocodile so i'm going to toss it over there and you'll see they're going to start chasing these pellets well, around. Well, see, you don't even notice that they're in the water until they come up for food. No, and there's a lot of crocodiles in here. And so you're going to see I'm going to start putting a lot of these pellets out there. And when you say when you say a lot of crocodiles in there, how many do you think are in this? There's probably 15 in this group right now. And you're going to notice some of them have yellow tags. What we do to track our bloodlines here, because we have uh, three distinct bloodlines here. We have South African now crocodiles. We have East African now crocodiles. And we have Madagascar now crocodiles. And so whenever they're in a certain spot, we want to make sure they stay with the right group. 99% of our animals here are female. And so we control their bloodline just by controlling the males that they're with. So we track them by putting up, you see a yellow tag surface on the water? That is an East African animal. If you don't see a tag, it's a Madagascar animal. If so, you are a male here, you're like the ultimate bachelor. <laughs> it's a good spot to be a male. <laughs> it is a really, really good spot to be a male. Now, what we do is where we're actually standing right now is actually a capture point. We actually built this. So what we will do is we will train a crocodile. Like they're eating right now, they're eating all these pellets. So we will go ahead and train a crocodile when we want to move them to make it really so it's not very invasive to come to the, go the door. So if you look down here, you're going to see this crocodile waiting at the door. And so what we do is they're all on the pellets out there. So once they get to a certain point, we get these crocodiles. They'll start coming up here just to grab oh, the food. Oh, yeah. He's like, well, hey, buddy, it went over there. I think he the missed it. Stage is we can open this gate right here, and this crocodile will hop right up here where we're standing. And then we close the gate, and the crocodile is captured. And it, we never had to really lay any real serious hands on him or anything like that. It's really not very invasive. It's really, really good for the crocodile. And... Uh, and you'll see they'll start coming up here. And this is like stage two of the training. So when they first move out here, they're all on pellets. And then it, we progressively move them to where they're eating off of our tongs. And then by the time the public sees them in the adult pools, that's why you get to see where they come up and they jump for us and they do everything like they're supposed to because they've already been trained for several years. Gotcha. So it's like once you've trained with the baby food, you get to move on to the hard food, right. and, and then you get to move you, on to dessert. And then they do what you're seeing here right at the gate. They're ready to come up here where people are, <laughs> but they're not biting at us or anything like right. that because they're used to the tongs. And so it makes the entire group to be very, very safe. Gotcha. Well, thank you for showing us the encounter today. This has been so much fun and so enlightening and very educational. I just, I love the whole experience and I'm really glad I'm going to be taking my nephew and my boyfriend out for a tour Come or a field on, trip one ready. time. Yeah, we'll get you brave and you can feed one. Yeah, and Courtney, <laughs> since you've already been here, I bet you're a, a pro. Courtney can use the little feeder as well and come on out and help I me just feed watch. some of these crocodiles. For more information, just log on to HoustonLife.tv. Derek and Courtney, back to you guys. Wow, Lauren. So awesome. It looks like a lot of fun. Thanks so much for that. We'll see you soon and we'll be right back with a look at what's happening on tomorrow's show. 
tomorrow, y'all, we are spilling the tea into some cocktails. Ooh. Tea sip owner Jessica Boyd will walk us through the steps to make some boozy drinks with a tea twist. Wait a minute. So each one of the cocktails includes some sort of tea? Yes. Okay, sign me up. That sounds like a lot of fun. Plus, as long as we're drinking, <laughs> we got to talk about the wine club. Your chance to win your very own Houston Life wine glass. Well, that sounds pretty cool. Join our wine club if you have not already. We'll have all the details tomorrow on Houston Life and those insulated little wine cups you see on your screen. I believe that is the giveaway. Absolutely. They're perfect for the patio, for the pool, for your backyard, or sitting in the closet. <laughs> Away from people. <laughs> is that what you, you do? I mean, sometimes you just need a moment. Some people escape to the garage during COVID. <laughs> they lock the doors and just recline the seat in the car. I, I've done that too. Okay, well, thanks for sending in the photos of your hashtag Mask Monday. We had a lot of fun on today's show, didn't we? Oh, look at this. We're going to leave you with some of the pictures that y'all have sent in. Thanks so much for hanging with us today. Oh We're going to do it all again tomorrow. Sounds good. See you then.